What if I told you that you could cut your tedious yet super important tasks in your business from hours down to minutes using just ChatGPT and one more tool, which I'll tell you about later. In this video, I'm gonna reveal five tricks for using ChatGPT to double your productivity without having to spend thousands of dollars on hiring. How even time-strapped entrepreneurs can implement these inside of ChatGPT and give you ways to use these tricks in the rest of your business too. To start though, we need to make sure that you have the right level of ChatGPT to ensure that you can implement everything I'm about to teach you. Well, the cool thing is, is that you can totally use the free version of ChatGPT to double your productivity in your online business through what you're about to learn. But I do have to recommend that you get the ChatGPT Pro version because you can do a ton of productive things for your online business, but I will cover that in a later video. Okay, so here's the first ChatGPT trick to doubling your productivity in your online business. So if you have a guitar like this one here, and I can't play it at all, but if I start playing it and it's out of tune, we have to tune it so it sounds pretty good, right? I have no idea if that sounds good or not, but I know I have to tune it because I haven't played it in forever. And using ChatGPT to become more productive in your business is no different. You have to train ChatGPT to write in your own unique voice and style before delegating tasks to it. Like I said, it's like tuning a guitar before a concert. You have to do a little bit of work beforehand in order to tune it to sound good and to complement your style. And again, ChatGPT is no different. You have to tune it a little bit it so it sounds like you when it's doing the things that I'm about to teach you that will help you become way more productive in your business. Otherwise, anything that you ask ChatGPT to write for you is going to sound like, well, like it was written by AI. Okay, so here's a prompt that you can use inside of ChatGPT to tell it how to write in your tone of voice and style. So this is the prompt that you want to put in. And a lot of different prompts work. I've had just great luck with this specific prompt. So first thing you want to do is you want to find find some form of writing example or speaking example that you have done, whether it's an email that you've written or a couple emails that you've written, could be a transcript of a podcast episode that you've done, a video that you've done, a blog post that you've written. You wanna choose a couple different ones, preferably, that you feel like, yeah, this sounds a lot like me. Then you want to upload those. I just do them as PDFs. Upload those in the ChatGPT with using the following prompt. Could you analyze the attached text input for its tone of voice, style, and sentence structure. Please provide insights on the overall tone, for example, format, informal, optimistic, pessimistic, etc. The style of writing, for example, narrative, descriptive, persuasive, and any notable, notable features in the sentence structure, like use of complex sentences, short and punchy sentences, passive or active voice emojis, etc. And then additionally, summarize your analysis of both text inputs, and I'll explain that in a second, in a concise paragraph that can be used as directions for a team member to write something on my behalf, ensuring that it aligns with the analyzed tone, style, and structure. Begin your response with write the following style and tone of voice. And so then you have the sample text. So the sample text can be an email that you've written that you feel like is in your tone of voice. It can be the transcript of a podcast episode that you've done, the transcript of a video that you've done. Any of those will work as long as you feel like, yeah, that's like that sounds like me talking or me writing. Could be a blog post, right? I recommend doing one or two or maybe even three different sample texts that you can input in the ChatGPT to create this paragraph for you so that it will, will create the voice paragraph for you. Okay, trick number two, and that is I'm going to teach you how to create an SOP in less than a minute. SOP is a standard operating procedure. And this, this trick right here is really a double winner because not only is it going to take you to seconds to be to create an SOP, but it's going to save you so much time in in the future. Now, an SOP, a standard operating procedure, is basically a checklist for how you complete a task. And if you want to delegate your work to somebody on your team or to ChatGPT, then you need an SOP. You need the steps that need to be taken in order to complete that task. Having an SOP to be able to complete a task so that you can hand it off to somebody, I mean, that alone can double your productivity right there because you don't have to do the task anymore. Somebody else or something else is doing it for you. But so few businesses actually have SOPs in their business because they're a pain in the butt to put together, right? You have to go through the task. You have to write down all the steps that it actually takes to complete that task. Talk about 
the minutia and that taking forever to do. That's why very few businesses have SOPs because they don't want to go through the minutia in order to complete them, but they're critical in being able to grow your online business. It can literally take you like an hour to create one SOP. Well, here's how to use ChatGPT to create an SOP in a matter of seconds. Okay, so this is the prompt that you're going to use inside of ChatGPT, but in order to use this, what you're going to want to do first is you are going to want to record yourself with using Loom or something, any kind of screen recording software. You want to record yourself doing an actual task, right? So an example that I did in my business using this exact prompt was I recorded myself editing a podcast episode inside of Descript. And as I was doing it, I was just talking through what my edits were. And then I took that video, I gave it to my team and I said, look, let's create an SOP out of this video using ChatGPT. So then what we do is we just take the transcript of that video, which you can use like riverside.fm forward slash transcription. That's a totally free transcription service that works really, really well. Then you've got the transcript of you talking through that task completion. Now we have something to use along with this prompt. So here's the prompt. You are a world-class helpful assistant who is especially adept at creating standard operating procedures, SOPs, that are both thorough and easy to follow. So then we say, this is the context of this prompt, right? So number one, the purpose of the SOP is for someone to be able to follow the steps and complete the task, even if they've never done the task before. Number two, the SOP is intended for our virtual assistant to follow. So basically with the context, we're telling ChatGPT what we're going to be using it for and why we're having them do this exercise. Then the criteria that we want to give the ChatGPT, number one, please include the following sections in your SOP output, right? Let's list sections like objectives, scope, procedures, responsibilities, etc. Again, if it makes sense for what you're doing. And then number two, the format should be an easy to follow checklist and bullet points with any necessary section headings and subheadings. And then finally, the instructions. This is where you're actually telling ChatGPT what to do. Using the above context and criteria, I want you to create an SOP based on the attached video transcript. So that's what I was talking about is you're attaching the transcript to uh, this prompt here. So if it's a super long transcript and you don't have, you know, ChatGPT Pro and you're able to put in a longer transcript into a longer, you know, text file into ChatGPT, what I would do is I would use Claude, Claude.ai and do this exact same exercise. Use the exact same same prompt, you can upload longer forms of text into Claude, and I would just do it uh, with that. But if you have like ChatGPT Pro and you can like the Turbo and you can you have longer forms of text you can um, input in there, go for it or just use Claude. So going back to it, so I use this exact prompt here and this is exactly what it gave me. So it gave me the objective. So again, it was reading the video that I that we did this with. It gave me the objective and then it gave me the complete editing checklist. So it's like repetitive phrase phrases, filler words, blah, 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 blah. Tells, um, it tells the editor who's editing the podcast what to be looking out for and what steps to follow. Now, going back to uh, right here, the, the context and the criteria, if you have an SOP template that you follow, so say, for example, you have an outline like this, like this, let's just say this is the template um, of your SOPs. Well, you can create a PDF of this, upload it into ChatGPT or Claude, and under the criteria, you can tell it to to make sure to follow the attached SO SOP template in your output. So now it's following a specific template that you've given it. The more examples that you can give the ChatGPT to work with based on what you want something to look like, the better result that you are going to get. Okay, so here's ChatGPT trick number three to doubling your productivity. As an online business owner, one of the best things that you can do is to build and to nurture your email list, right? So we wanna be sending emails to to our email list to provide value and to also to drive them to our offers. And one of the best ways to do that is to be sending weekly email, uh, I call them newsletters, to your email list. But they can take a long time to write, like a really long time. For me, when like recently I wrote one myself before doing this exact uh, prompt that I'm about to share with you, it took me like three hours to write the email. Now with ChatGPT and the right prompt and the right inputs, it can literally take you minutes, saving you hours every single week. Okay, so here's the prompt that you want to use inside of ChatGPT. So in this first section, we're telling ChatGPT how we want it to act, who we want it to be. In this case here, I'm telling it, you're a world-class email
email newsletter writer who writes some of the most widely read, and this is where you can write gardening or knitting or e-commerce, whatever it is, weekly email newsletters in the world. So for me, I just put business. So next we want to give it context, which is again, we're telling ChatGPT complete, do this output through this lens. So this is where we're going to put in our, our target audience, the, the writing, the style of total voice that we did in, in trick in step number one. So this is where we do the audience. So we, you explain your target audience. Then we go into, again, you're copying and pasting your tone of voice and style paragraph that it uh, created for you in step number one. Then you want to tell ChatGPT what the goal of the email newsletter is, right? So we say, this is a weekly email newsletter with the following objective. And I wrote for the reader to take what they learn in the newsletter and implement it or note an idea and bookmark it for later. For example, a workflow, how do I accomplish X, etc. Again, that's going to be custom for whatever the goal of your newsletter is. Then we go into the criteria. So this is where we're telling ChatGPT, hey, then your output that you generate needs to include these things. So for me here, I have a, my newsletter has four sections, a tip, an AI workflow example, an offer with a call to action, and then I list out five AI tools of the week. So I'm telling it the body of the newsletter should contain four different sections. And I just list those out. Criteria number two, total length of the email should not exceed a thousand words. And then criteria number three, please tell me where in the email that you recommend including images to align with the text. So if you don't put images in your weekly newsletters and your weekly emails, then you wouldn't include that step there in the criteria. For me, I do want to include images in the in the emails. I'm asking ChatGPT to tell me this is where I, I recommend you include images uh, within the text. So now we move down to the instructions. And this is where, again, we're telling ChatGPT this is what we want it to go do based on the context and criteria. So again, everything we've already told it above that you've been given, write an email newsletter using the below input sections. So this is where we have to tell ChatGPT the types of information that we want to include in our email newsletter. And so I say at the beginning of the email, please write a three to five sentence introduction of the email, highlighting what's in the newsletter for the readers this week. Please also provide five different subject line ideas for the email. So this is super helpful for you because it's going to give you ideas on what the subject lines that it could that you could use. So then you want to go into here are the inputs to base each of the sections on. So this would change for you if you don't have multiple sections. If you said this is the input for the newsletter, if you only want to talk about one thing, then that's where you would put it uh, Put it in here. So for me, I have different sections. This week's tip, and then I put the input. So this is where you'd put information about it. And I'm going to share with you an example here in a second. Uh, the AI workflow of the week, input. Uh, the offer, input. Tools of the week, input. Here's what that looks like inside of ChatGPT. This is everything that I just read to you. This is the exact prompt. And then and down here, you can see where I added in the inputs. So this week's tip, and then here's the input AI workflow of the week. And then uh, I give it the workflow. And so I'm basically just adding in each of those inputs and then tools of the week at the bottom. So then this is the result that it gave me. Here's the five subject lines that it recommended. And then here is the newsletter. So this is where we want to obviously look at the result that it gave us and say, yeah, yeah, I liked it. Great. I can take this and then just kind of make some edits to it. Maybe add a story, a personal story to it. Or we're like, oh, but and by the way, it gave the image recommendations for where it recommended putting the images into the email right at the bottom. So this is where we're like, all right, this is pretty good. Or mm, it's really missing the mark. If you feel like it's missing the mark, that's where you go back up to the prompt and make any kind of um, changes like go like be more specific or tell it how many sentences or how many paragraphs that you wanted to include, where it might, where you might want it to elaborate, etc. But you might be like, oh, this email newsletter result is awesome. I'm just going to tweak it slightly to expand it and I'm done. And I'm going to add some images and boom, we're good to go. So the idea here is it's going to take you some time to really dial this prompt till you get to the point where the result that it's giving you so that you have to make very few changes to it and it's good to go to be sent out. But it'll take you a little bit of time to get there. I know that I've gotten this prompt. It's literally, it's literally takes me hours to write a weekly email. Now using this prompt and putting these inputs in, it takes me minutes. So I am getting so much of my time back. Here's ChatGPT trick number four for doubling your productivity. When I first started online,
online years ago. One thing I heard over and over again from sort of veterans, if you will, of the online space, and that was hone one skill, get really good at copywriting, because that's where you make a lot of money in your business. When you can write such that you can be moving people to take action to buy from you, you're going to make a lot of money. So really hone the skill of copywriting. I got good enough to understand how to write decent copy, but I've never considered myself a really good copywriter. And if I had to write an email marketing sequence, like a full on email marketing funnel, it would take me not hours. It would take me days to write a full on email marketing funnel. So and then when I started making more money in my business, I turned to hiring copywriters to write the emails for me. Right. And the work that they produced, it was really good, but it cost thousands of dollars to write a really good email marketing sequence. So it was either spend a ton of time writing out these email sequences or spend a ton of money on paying somebody to write these email sequences for me. Now with ChatGPT, it's like having a skilled copywriter at your fingertips, effortlessly creating email sequences for you in a matter of minutes. And you don't have to spend thousands of dollars to get these email sequences is written. So let me show you how you can use ChatGPT to write an entire email sequence for you in a matter of minutes. So again, we want to start the prompt off telling ChatGPT who we want it to be, how we want it to act, right? So since we're writing a email marketing sequence, we're telling it, hey, you're a world-class conversion copywriter. You're especially good at writing email marketing campaigns that get people to take action without being cheesy and overly salesy or pushy. Now, that's just my brand. You can change or take that out, uh, that last part out if you want to totally up to you. Then we move into the context like we have uh, in the previous steps here. So again, we want to share who is this email marketing sequence for because we're probably moving people to towards an offer. So here's the audience, right? So we share who the audience is. Again, we share the tone of voice for the emails. Another example of why it's critical to right from the get go to teach ChatGPT what our tone of voice and style is for the emails, right? Then we want to tell ChatGPT about our offer. So we go over to ChatGPT here. And so you want to tell it the offer, the benefits, right? Um, anything that you can think of that would be important that you want to put into an email marketing sequence, you need to tell, tell ChatGPT, you need to give it again, you need to give it criteria and context of to what include in the email marketing sequence. So tell it who the offer is for, the benefits. Uh, you can talk about some features. What is the call to action that you want it to right give it the um give it the price and here's a little ninja trick too if you have testimonials from an existing offer and it's relevant to this offer or if you've already had this offer and you're just rewriting the email sequence and you have testimonials input those testimonials into ChatGPT, and uh, i would put them into the context area of your prompt because now ChatGPT is able to uh, read through actual customer testimonials and it will make the emails that much better. Okay, so now that we've told ChatGPT about the offer, then we give it the criteria. And this is basically where we tell tell ChatGPT how many emails we want it to write over what period of time, if there's urgency and scarcity in the email. So in this example here, I said total length the email sequence is four emails over seven days. At the end of the four emails, the price goes up to the public price and will be open up to the public. So there's, I want ChatGPT to include that language in the email somewhere. And then I'm telling the tone what I want ChatGPT to use as the tone, email should be persuasive yet friendly. So it has all this information now. Now I just need to tell it what I want it to do. Based on the context and criteria that you've been given, write an email marketing campaign that sells the offer. At the beginning of each of your emails, please provide five different subject lines for that specific email. And this is an example of what it will uh, generate for you. So here's email number one. Here are five subject line ideas. And you can notice that it's including emojis and so forth because that's sort of with my brand. It's just light and not pushy, right? So what I like about ChatGPT is it's asking you after each email, it says, let me know if this aligns with what you had in mind or if there are any adjustments you like before moving on to the next email in the sequence. I love that because it's asking 
asking you, hey, how was this? Do you want to edit the prompt in any way uh, before I move on to the second email? And then it does that for each email. So you're like, so for me, I was like, this is great. So I just said, hey, this is great. But also, can you include X, right? But please continue. So then, great. It keeps moving through each of these emails. And then I would say it took me probably 15 minutes to edit these emails up to a point where I was like, yeah, I'm going to use these. But I'm somebody who does way better with when I have copy on my screen rather than staring at a blank screen, right? So I've basically taken an exercise that would normally take me either days to write or spend thousands of dollars on writing, uh, hiring a copywriter for. I've now done this in a matter of minutes. And then I take the output that it's given me, spend 15 minutes updating it, maybe adding some personal stories in there. And I have a complete email marketing sequence to sell my offer, saving a ton of time. And again, saving a ton of money having to hire a copywriter to write this for me. And here's ChatGPT trick number five to doubling your productivity, your email inbox. When it comes to your email inbox, it can feel like drinking from a fire hose at times. It can feel super overwhelming. But when you have ChatGPT automatically creating email replies for all the emails that you get, it can feel like, hey, that fire hose is getting turned off and you're handed a nice cold glass of water that you can sip from a straw from. Now, in order to automate your email replies, you are going to have to use one other tool outside of ChatGPT. And that tool is going to be like Zapier or Make.com, one of these automation tools. I personally use Zapier. So I'm going to take you inside of Zapier here in just a second and show you exactly what this very simple automation looks like and what the prompt is to use in ChatGPT. So this is literally what the entire automation looks like. It's really simple to set up. So the trigger is when you get a new email in Gmail, if you use like Outlook or some other email provider, um, you can do that with this too. I use Gmail. So when I get a new email in Gmail, the event is new email, right? And the trigger is when I get an email inside of my inbox. So when I get a new e email in the, in the inbox, that's what's triggering this automation. And that's literally the entire first step. So the next step in this automation, that's where chat GPT comes in. So the event is a conversation. So we can select from these things here. So we choose conversation and then we choose the, your chat GPT account and then the action. So this is where it gets, um, this is where you want to set things up correctly in order to get the results that we're looking for so that chat GPT can write the email replies for you to save you a ton of time. So we say the action. So the user message is you're choosing. So you click in the box here and you choose your, you're, you're just choosing the body of the email option. So that's body plane. The model, I'm just using ChatGPT 3.5 Turbo. Uh, memory key, I don't need to put anything in there. Username, it just defaults to user. It's totally fine. Assistant name, you can name your assistant anything you want. I just left it as assistant. So then this is where it's really important because this is the prompt that you're giving the ChatGPT to write the email reply. So again, notice I'm following this same format that I've been talking about throughout this video. You're a world-class helpful assistant. I want you to first read the, and then I just tell it. So again, I can click here and choose from this, but I, so I just chose the, again, the body of the email that we've gotten so that you can then generate a casual yet reassuring response to that email. Use the sender's first name. So again, I just click in here. I choose the first name from who I've gotten it from, the emails from in your email response. When appropriate, use words like thanks or talk soon when ending the email. So then I give it the context. So the context is just simply that tone of voice or style paragraph, the writing style paragraph that we did in step one of this video. So all I did was I just copy and pasted it right in here. And then scrolling down here, um, I think it defaults to max tokens of a thousand. I just kept it as a thousand. Now the temperature is really, um, is really important, right? So if you're not sure what the temperature is when it comes to uh, ChatGPT, you can just click on the little more here. So the, the higher the value, so it's between zero and two. So the closer that you are to two, the more random it be it, it, the, the response that it gives you. The lower the value, closer to zero, um, it is it's very on the nose. It's very specific. It won't take any liberties in its response. Well, it's not supposed to. So I just have it as a point two because I, it can take a few liberties here. That's OK. But I, but at the same time, I don't want it to take too much. So I just kept it very low at a point two. And then literally you are done with the chat GPT version of the automation. Okay. So I click continue, I test it out. And then the final step is, OK, 
okay, you've gotten the email, you've gotten an email in your inbox, it, you get it gets sent to ChatGPT to read and to write a response. Now, where do we want that email response to go? Well, you can send it right over to your drafts folder inside of Gmail or in Outlook or whatever you're using. So again, so the event is create a draft email and the action is the subject. You just choose the subject option here and it will take the subject of whatever the email was that you that came into your email inbox. The to field is the to field. The from is your email address or your team's email address, or whatever you want to do there. Uh, the body type, I just put plain. And then the body is just the reply that ChatGPT came up with. So you click in the box here, come down to conversation in ChatGPT, and you can scroll down here and you'll find reply. So this is the reply that ChatGPT generated in this second step of the automation. And then you simply tell it where you want it to put that email. So I put it, I just have it put it in the drafts folder in Gmail. I click continue and then I click test just to test it all out. And you now have a very simple automation. The emails that you get into your Gmail or Outlook or whatever, it will write rep a reply for you, a very good email reply for you based on the email that it gets. And then put that reply for you in the drafts folder in Gmail or Outlook. So now all you have to do is go into the drafts folder and look at the emails that ChatTB has written for you, make any little tweaks here and then send it. It's doing all the work for you. It's become your email assistant in writing email replies for you. And it does a really good job. So again, just like the other prompts we've been talking about here in this video, if it's not writing the replies that you're really happy with, you just simply go back into this second step here in the prompt and you tweak this prompt, meaning like, oh, write a write a three to five sentence. Maybe maybe it's writing the replies, you know, maybe they're too long. So just tell it to write shorter. That's really all it is. Uh, so you just tweak the prompt here inside of the automation until you start to get the results that you are looking for, until it starts writing the replies that you are happy with. So now you're going to save yourself a ton of time each and every week and also save yourself thousands of dollars by not having to hire out for these tasks on a regular basis. But the thing is, having ChatGPT write your weekly email or write complete email marketing funnels or handle incoming emails is completely useless if you don't have a sales page to send people to so that they can buy your offer. But writing an effective sales page can take you days. And if you hire a professional copywriter to write that sales page for you, it's going to cost you between like five and $20,000 to write that sales page. In my next video, I'm going to teach you how to write a great sales page, a complete sales page in less than 30 minutes that will cost you nothing. So make sure to subscribe, leave a comment below with your biggest aha from today's video, and I'll see you in the next one.